about a topic that is uh, concerning uh, waste disposal uh, on ships and vessels. What technologies are used in that area and what are the law regulations concerning the very important uh, topic nowadays because uh, we, were, we are discussing a lot of ecological issues and a human impact on the natural environment. Especially today, we celebrate the, on the 5th of uh, June, we celebrate a very important uh, international celebration, the holiday, which is called the International Day of the Protection of the Natural Environment. So I think that uh, would, would be useful, the information I uh, that will be given during the classes. Okay, to start with, uh, it's good to know that there is a special organization that is called Cruise Lines International Association uh, that is responsible of the protection of the sea and oceans in a tourist meaning. Uh, it was established in the middle of 70s and it is uh, an organization uh, for the tour operators uh, that uh, organizes many uh, touristic uh, trips, roads in many parts of the of our world. And as you can see, the statistics as are followed: uh, about 24 million passengers annually are transported using the um, cruise lines belong to the, the to that organization. Uh, it is, it is important that uh, it, it cooperates uh, with the International Maritime Organization that is responsible of, for taking care of the state, uh, ecological uh, state of the seas and oceans. And uh, interesting is that uh, on the website of that uh, cruises lines, we, 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 we may found uh, news concerning the declaration of the carbon emissions reduce, reduce uh, till the end 2030. It is very important because uh, nowadays the topic of climate change and the um, higher emission of, um, of carbon dioxide is uh, more common and with the uh, awareness uh, are much more white than it used to be that even 10 years ago. So what kind of uh, waste we might be reduced uh, the ones that are produced uh, on the ships and vessels during those uh, marvelous, big, um, epic uh, touristic roads uh, when there are many tourists on board. So we have a glass uh, or metal as well, and uh, it um, is compressed using the crusher machines that are on board. I will uh, I will show you the short video how it looks like. We have also uh, waste incinerators, uh, the special equipment on board as well, where the waste uh, is burned. And, and of course, uh, it is uh, uh, disposed in that way. And we have the bio uh, waste that is uh, con connected with the fish feeding because it is ecological and it is uh, it has no impact of the environment. We just uh, can throw it away uh, to the sea or to the ocean. So it is not aggressive to the ecosystem. Interesting thing is uh, that we have uh, many types of uh, sources that of, um, of some uh, waste uh, that are produced uh, on a ship on board. But first of all, we have something that is called great, uh, gray waste water source. That, that is the first. Uh, that is the first type, the gray uh, waste. So we have uh, the water that is used um, 
that comes from sinks, showers or laundry, uh, from the tourist cabins and for the crew cabins as well, from the toilets, so uh, it contains some detergents, and very often that kind of uh, waste are transformed into really pure water that might be uh, disposable into the uh, into the ocean or into the sea. Uh, the process is quite simple, and uh, the technique that is used is called reverse osmosis. And it is used in a special equipment that is called membrane bioreactor MBR, and it is very common on on board on the biggest or maybe not the biggest ones uh, ships or vessels uh, for waste disposal. So as we can see, we have a bioreactor with special bacteria, uh, bacteria that transform the waste uh, into clean water in a biological process of cleaning the water and after that it uh, might be safely disposal uh, into the water and it doesn't hurt the natural environment the second type uh, despite of gray wastewater that has been discussed um, before it is black wastewater sources. So as you can see, it is a more, let's say, dangerous. It's savage from cruise accommodation or the medical type of waste that comes from ship hospital. And uh, also uh, there is a process of reproducing uh, or uh, the, the process of uh, disposing that type of black wastewater sources. And uh, the first one is uh, they might be burned in a ship incinerator because it is uh, not the fluid, not the liquid, but uh, it many, very often there are sediments that are the results of the biological cleaning of the waste, of the wastewater. So it might be uh, burned in a ship incinerator or uh, transported for onshore disposal. Onshore disposal is uh, connected with a lot of paperwork. We need to call the special organization of the country we are approaching and we need to uh, fill, uh, fill in special documents for it. But uh, it is uh, needed. We are obliged to do it when we are the captain or, or the vessels. There are very there is very specific information containing many detail, details what kind of waste uh, need to be disposed on shore. As you can see from that slide, average uh, fresh water daily usage of one ship is from six to over than twenty thousand liters. So it is a very huge amount and uh, just um, imagine how many ships, how many vessels nowadays are crossing the oceans, the, the seas with many tourists on board. So the scale of the phenomenon is uh, very strict, very severe and we need to take up special methods to, to protect our seas and our oceans. And uh, the aim of the water disposal on a ship is to reuse it, reuse it. So we have discussed about the uh, biological process to make the water clean on board. And very often after that process, it is not uh, always throw away to, to the ocean, but it might be used, for example, to flush the toilet on board and it is uh, the very nice way of reuse the water on board and there she is uh, the incinerator the incinerator the photo of the incinerator was taken uh, at uh, polish 
Polar Station Horizont in uh, that the po Polish scientific base that is located in the southern part of the Spitsbergen Island. I had an opportunity to work there for one year uh, as a member of the wintering staff. And we have such kind of equipment uh, to uh, burn the burn waste to dispose them uh, on the st on the station uh, daily because uh, especially during the summer period there was a lot of uh, people at the station and we unfortunately produced uh, many many waste like uh, paper the biological waste the bio waste uh, and so on the characteristic uh, of the that type of of incinerator was the temperature uh, that might be up to 1000 uh, degrees centigrade um the it might contain um the bags uh, of 120 liters of waste and the whole process of burning the the waste uh, took about 2 4 hours and of course diesel fuel was the uh source that uh, um, that uh, make the whole process working. Uh, very often, that types of incinerators are used as well uh, on ships and vessels because it is that that type, and you we use it um, at the station. And uh, now there is a short video concerning the our incinerator, how it looks like. As you can see, the first uh, step of the whole process is to remove the ash with the rest of uh, unburnt uh, waste uh, from inside to clean it. And only after that, you can put uh, the waste for being burned. I'm not sure if you can hear the sound, but it's very noisy. So we put the incinerator in a one uh, separated building uh, that uh, not to disturb the people during work. Okay, and how about uh, the glass or metal waste? Because there is also uh, the type of waste that are produced uh, on ships as well and uh, as i have told you uh, for that purposes very often the crusher machines are used on board and at the polish polar station we also had the crusher machine for glass and for metal and it that type of materials were smashed um, before they were put in a special barrels the oil empty oil barrels and after that it was uh, sent to Poland for the for being uh, processed in a way of uh, reuse it in the recycling. So I will show you as well the short video concerning the crusher machine. And of course, it is also very noisy equipment. Okay, so the barrels or the other boxes with uh, smashed materials like, <clears throat> I'm sorry, glass, metal, and so on, are stored on on a ship, 
and when the ship is approaching to the uh, port, uh, it is uh, disposed in that area concerning, of course, to the law regulations that are valid for the country. Uh, and about those regulations, we just go back to the slide uh, concerning the port of Gdansk. I choose uh, that city because uh, it is a Polish uh, port, uh, a Polish uh, Polish city. Of course, uh, the captains uh, or the tour operators that uh, are traveling across the whole world, they need to um, they need to read the regulations for each country for each uh, each uh, city because it's different the documentation is different and the restrictions are uh, not not are similar so uh, for example what uh, kind of waste are described in the documents concerning the short base reception facility the point that uh, receives the waste from the ships and vessels. So there are a waste oils and they make chairs, solid waste. Uh, they, comes from, they come from, for example, those bioreactors, as uh, I have told you. Some cargo residues as well, savage. So all of the stuff that uh, might that might not be recycled or uh, somehow reused on a ship or in a vessel uh, because it's too dangerous for the people and for the natural environment. Uh, for example, in a port of Dansk, uh, there is an information that they don't receive uh, they don't receive any uh, substances uh, ozone depleting. So uh, it is in important information because if on board there are some of such kind of materials, uh, they need to have a special procedure the other way to reuse, to, to reuse, to dispose it. Okay, and uh, there is also an information of the main website of that. Uh, facility that the shipping vessels or the very small units don't are not obliged to uh, to give uh, the, the the waste to the facility or they have a different uh, policy uh, of uh, waste disposal that is not valid for the big touristic uh, ships or vessels so uh, of course every regulations uh, and the whole procedures are very well described on, as you can, as I have told you, on a website uh, belonging to the special facility in country or in a city. So, for example, in the Park of Dance, there is a full documentation available just to download it, to fill in, and to send to the facility to get the approval. For example, when I uh, was traveling to the Antarctic, uh, where the Polish Antarctic Station is located, the other Polish scientific base where I worked uh, for one year. Uh, we were transported on a Russian vessel. It is a Polar Pioneer. It is a touristic vessel, but uh, in that um, season, it, uh, doesn't, it won't uh, work anymore. Last season uh, was his last, very, very last season uh, in the in, with the job with the tourists but for example then there we can observe for example uh, the, the the method let's say con uh, concerning connected with the uh, fish feeding uh, on board uh, because where there were some waste from the kitchen like a piece of carrots uh, apples and so on they just threw it away uh, to the sea uh, with no danger, of course, to, to the ecosystem because it's biot, so that was not the problem with it. And uh, on the third, on the second photo, you can see my colleague. Uh, we traveled on the same ship to, to the Antarctic. Uh, he is uh, doing some physical exercises, but behind him, uh, you can see the white something white like uh, like a chimney because it is a chimney uh, or uh, something similar to it because um there was a waste incinerator on a on a board 
uh, used for for uh, this disposal uh, this disposal of some waste and they just burn it uh, use it uh, it especially in the evening but for us it was a total disaster because we were uh, doing some exercises on a top deck and it was very disturbing to have those uh, fumes around you so we needed we need to choose another 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 day it, Day, another day uh, or another time of the day to to have some exercises. Why exercises? It was uh, very important for us because we were traveling for more than one month on a, on a, on that ship from Poland, from Gdansk, from Gdynia, uh, the the city in the north of Poland, to uh, King George Island, uh, the island very close to the Antarctic Peninsula, and it took us about 34, 36. 36 days, so it was very important to be in a good health, uh, physical health, and uh, be in a good shape uh, in that uh, time. So that's why we took up as many physical exercises as we can. Okay, so it is the last uh, slide of my presentation. If you have any questions, please ask.